slow down anytime soon. It is, as uh, Daryl Perry put it earlier, it is keeping people out of Keene, keeping uh, families from moving to Keene. Uh, it's keeping, it's encouraging people to leave Keene. And, um, you know, what can be done about that? Well, the government could be far more efficient. Uh, and I know a lot of people talk about that, but I have, a, I have an idea as to how that can be made happen. And one of the ways that you can do that is by converting the government of Keene to a voluntary government, a consensual government, one where if people don't appreciate the work that the government guys are doing, that they can opt out. If I don't like what the police are doing, where they're out down, uh, downtown every weekend arresting college students for having an open container of alcohol, when I think they should be investigating rapes and you know, murders and assaults and arsons, real crimes, uh, then I don't want to fund a department that is doing something that I think is inappropriate, but yet I'm forced to fund them by the confiscatory taxation system that we have where a home is threatened. If, if a homeowner does not pay property taxes, they will have their home stolen from them. I think that's uh, inappropriate, I think it's wrong, it's not neighborly, and it needs to end. <coughs> Hello, my name is Chris Roberts. I'm running for re-election as Councilor at Lodge. And um, the first thing that I would say is, <clears throat> because I'm running for public office, I'm a firm believer that everyone should be at this table speaking their mind and answering the questions. It, you should not be, you should not use it as an excuse not to show up because you may not like the person you're sitting to next to, or you may not like someone's views. If we're running for public office, it's a privilege and we have the right and the duty to be able to face the voters and answer th those questions. And but one of the biggest reasons that um, I'm running for a public office is I think that all offices should be competitive. And second, I'm not locked into any belief. I sometimes get myself in trouble because on some issues I'll vote Democrat, some I'll vote Republican, some I'll vote Libertarian, but most of all I vote the issue and I look at each issue individually and try to do the best and best job possible to face on that issue. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. Um, you can actually answer the first question and we'll pass it back and forth here. Uh, as an at-large uh, candidate for city council, what are your top priorities? And this question is for each of you. <clears throat> the uh, at-large as a top priority, is the number one top priority is fill a lot of what we used to call in the Marine Corps sailboat fuel places. We have an awful lot of places in Keene, the old Circuit City, the Borders, the Center at Keene, a bunch of down at Kingsbury, down at the old David Ford. They're all empty. They're just housing air. And every time they sit there housing air, their value goes down. And when their value goes down, all the rest of the taxpayers, property owners, have to pick up that lost tax revenue. So if we're going to do anything for Keene, we have to be able to make Keene business friendly so we can get people who want to come in and use those spaces and make them valuable. Uh, top priorities for me, I already mentioned taxes. I'd also like to put out there that Keene has a real problem with victimless crime enforcement, meaning that uh, the jail is full of people who've never hurt anybody else. I think if you haven't hurt anybody, you shouldn't be in a jail cell. So uh, the, the police department needs to have a totally different focus. They need to focus on real crimes with real victims and stop this nonsense of arresting peaceful people who haven't harmed anybody else, whether it's for open container, for underage drinking, for possession of marijuana, you know, you name it. Uh, the cops are not focusing in the right areas, in my opinion. I think that's one thing. And there's also another category of victimless crimes. As Daryl Perry mentioned earlier, there's a problem with zoning in this town where there are people driving around threatening property owners uh, the zoning enforcement people are out there threatening uh, peaceful property owners for doing things that uh, the zoning board doesn't like. And I think that if you own property, you should have the ability to do what you want with it so long as you're not infringing on somebody else's uh, property or their rights. So I think those are two uh, really important issues. And also, I think the parking department needs to go away. Uh, I'm glad you brought up the zoning uh, thing. Uh, I read in the paper the other night, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, also that uh, where I live, they have changed the zoning that I know of at least twice, and now they're considering to change it again. I'm in Ward 2, 
Lord knows what I'll be in six months from now. And I, I'm just wondering why the city council is doing this. Why can't they just, you know, make it zone two and leave it as such? I mean, war two. Uh, I, I can't understand why the council has to keep bouncing around with Marlboro Street all the time. Um, and he says, uh, in the paper I read all the time about these criminals and uh, they get sentenced uh, to go to jail and just below it, they've all been suspended. And uh, I read four or five items uh, last night. They got sentenced to jail six months to a year and all was suspended. And I can't understand if they're sentenced, why are we suspending them? Is it because we don't have room at the jail? And that's one of the answers I'd like answered. Thank you. Uh, moving on to our next question. How do you propose the flooding situation in Keene gets handled? How do I propose what? The, uh, the, flooding, is the flooding situation, because there's been some flooding in Keene. <laughs> yeah, I think we just talked about that. <laughs> yeah, the flooding in Keene. As I say, the council that we have now, um, every time we have a flood, they, they make a statement in the paper that they're going to do something about it. And I've listened to them for the past five years, as I said before. Uh, I'm still waiting for them to do something about it. I mean, they can spend their money on other things that, to me, is not important because I'm one of the persons that get flooded. And uh, so I'm, I'm just sitting waiting for them to do something. If they say they're going to do it, uh, put a time limit on it. Don't just say they're going to do it. It just goes on and on and on and on, and nothing is done. I am not an expert on <coughs> engineering, so I can't say that I know how to fix a flooding problem. Um, but I know there are people who do, and uh, they're not the city council. Uh, the people on the city council are also not engineers. And also, the city council is not, uh, they don't have the correct incentives to solve this problem. I mean, they, they promised Beverly here that they're going to do something, but if they don't follow through on their promise, there's no accountability. There's nothing that can be done. There's no, oh, well, they said they would do this, but they didn't, so nothing happens. And then they can just say they'll do it again. And so I don't know what the solution is, but I know that the solution, whatever it is, is not going to come from a centralized board of bureaucrats or elected politicians who pretends to know it all. Uh, the solution needs to come from private property owners working together, and they'll figure it out. I think that's the solution. Well, to answer Beverly's first part, the reason Ward 2 was changed is because constitutionally every 10 years we have to change the, um, the wards up, and that's what happened, and the voters voted to change the wards on the, at the last uh, election because of the getting the, basically the five wards equalized. Second is, as far as the flooding, <clears throat> I am an engineer and I've worked with flooding before and what we haven't wanted to admit, I live on Grove Street and my house is flooded. We do have a serious problem. We have an old antiquated system and we based it on 50 and 100 year storms. Well, those 50 and 100 year storms have changed and basically what we need to come up and say, in some place where you had a 24 inch culvert, you may need a 42-inch culvert. But this will also comes into with DREAD, the Department of Resources up at um, Concord and the Civil um, and the, um, the Army Corps of Engineers. They have specific rules that require permits and a lot of other stuff. It's going to have to be fixed because if we don't fix it, private business is going to go and say the banking, you guys are now in a flood zone, and it's going to cost you a heck of a lot more money to insure it. Well, it, we're going to have to fix it, and it's going to cost millions, and yes, the city won't be able to do it. The public works won't be able to do it. They can do a little dressing up to mitigate some of the damage, but it's going to have to be done. It's going to have to be a long, drawn-out process to say, what can we do, not just to fix for now or the next five years. What are we going to do so it can be fixed for the next 25 to 50 years? And yes, it has to be done plain and simple. It, we're either going to have to do it, get on a ball and do it ourselves, or it's going to be forced upon us to do it. Thank you. Um, 
The next question is, uh, the property taxes in Keene are certainly high. I, I personally can't afford to live inside of the city, so uh, what can be done to reduce the tax burden on homeowners in Keene? The, um, yes, I think Keene right now may be in the unfortunate distinction when the new rates that come out be either ranked one, two, or three as the highest tax rate in the state of New Hampshire out of 234 municipalities. And right now, if you're going to be totally blunt about it, the only thing that you can do right now is to decrease the amount of increase because of what we have at the school, what we have at the, um, the county with the cost of the jail, to go back to your question, is every time we put someone in the jail, it's by between 106 to $116 a day. And all of a sudden, if you put someone in the jail for 180 days, look at the amount of money. You're looking at eighteen to, to $20,000. That's why they suspend and hope that it's going to be a good boy or a good girl and we don't have to put them in jail. <clears throat> the city's cutting down um, people. We have about 40 less people in it. The city is cutting back on, on services. And basically, in the state is down, downshifting funds. The, the government is downshifting funds. And basically, we're going to have to go on a diet. We are going to have to go on a serious diet if we're going to bankrupt ourselves, plain and simple. Because, yes, like people have said, people can't afford to live in Keene. People are living, living out of Keene. People are moving in the surrounding places like Chesterfield and Surrey and stuff. So their, their towns can just write a check to the school district so they don't have to cover any uh, infrastructure costs, don't have to cover any retirement costs. They're using us, our empty seats, like a price line. So what can be done about taxes? I think that if we leave it in the hands of politicians, we're going to get what we've always gotten, which is more uh, taxing every single year. They always talk about cutting back, but there's no evidence that that's actually happening. Uh, there are certainly government departments that are unnecessary. I mentioned zoning earlier. That's one of them. I like Daryl Perry's plan to uh, sell off all the city property. The city of Keene actually owns about 10% of the entire acreage of Keene. And what is it doing with it? Well, probably mismanaging it. So if the city puts that property up for sale, they could get a, a windfall of some money coming in, which could help offset at least temporarily some of these costs while they figure out how else they could cut back. But I think if we did what I suggested earlier and moved to a, a kind of a voluntary city or a consensual city where each taxpayer decides what the city services are worth to them, let's give them a breakdown. Instead of just four categories of uh, city, state, uh, county, and uh, school, I believe is what appears on the property tax bill. Instead of just four, let's break the city's part down and show all the departments and what amount that they are looking for, of that of the total amount they're, at, they're asking for, what are they looking for? And I use the term asking because I think the city should ask rather than demand because that's a neighborly way to do things. If they're providing a valuable service to people, then people will pay for it consensually. You don't have to threaten somebody to steal their house from them if you're doing something that's valuable. So I think that would be the major change because then if, if the city uh, the city department heads knew that they weren't guaranteed the same amount of money or more next year, that if, if uh, people were dissatisfied, they could cut back the amount that they were giving, they would have to be very, very efficient all of a sudden because then they would finally have the incentive to do so. Uh, yes, I'm going to answer your question, but first, Chairman, I forgot your name already. Chris. Uh, Chris. Um, my, where I live now, last year I was Ward 1. So it's only been a year and they changed it, not now 10 it, years. As a, as a result, because the, the recent census required us to change it, and then on the last vote, that switched them from Ward 1, to switch the wards around. Yeah, I mean, so it's changed from one year to another year. And, you know, I, I thought I was still in Ward 1, and I had to go down to City Hall and find out, oh, no, it's been changed again. And now I know I'm in Ward 2. Uh, as far as the property taxes, you know, I know the city has to have a budget to meet their standards. But again, I say, I think the city could cut some of their budgets, and that would help the property taxes. I, I'm, I'm assuming 
that that's why we pay taxes to help run the city and do the city budget. And uh, so I think there's, there could be some cuts in the budget. Um, and uh, I would like to see that happen. Uh, you know, the police department, I think we have a wonderful police department. But again, I say, you know, why are they all running around in cars? Why aren't they walking around? They're used to. And you never see a policeman downtown on foot. Um, I've seen him on bikes, but I've never seen him on foot. And I think I'd like to see that change for Main Street and down by the college having uh, policemen on foot. Thank you. Uh, final question here is, uh, how do you stand on laws to prohibit synthetic drugs? I want to vote yes or no on synthetic drugs? Yes. Well, you know, I'm not a big drug person. Uh, I, um, I really haven't really thought about it. I, I do have a member of the family uh, that at some point in time it was a problem, but it straightened itself out. And the synthetic drugs, you're talking about marijuana? Or? Like uh, K2, the stuff they sell at Fat Stuff. Uh, well, I read in the paper the other night they got a new drug out called Molly, you know, and, you know, I don't know anything about that, so I'm not, I'm not a drug person, you know. If you want to use drugs, that's your business, but stay away from me. Um, I, I will be perfectly honest with you. Uh,